should have stolen the door off the butcher shop. Halloween, Braddon. Halloween. Should have never done anything like that in the old country. What are you talking about? All Fool's Day, Guy Fox Day. Sure, you were a kid once yourself. Uh, that's right. Sure, <laughs> lads forget sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, Brad and I think we had better times than the kids have nowadays. We had the woods to tramp in, the fields to play in, and decent homes to live in. Look at these rat traps they call shelters. Uh -huh. There comes the brains of the police department. What's up, Craig? There's a minimum murder in apartment five. Stand by. Don't let anyone get away. I know it was too quiet to last. I'll cover the rear. You live here? Yep. Apartment five. Apartment five? What do you know about a murder? A murder? That's me. Albert Murder. Chuck, I just saw the cops go over to investigate the murder. Hey, old man, murder's gonna be scared to death, you know that. Yeah, no. Let's see, fellas, what are we gonna do now? Well, let me see. Hey, Spike, come here. You got another slug? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, let's see. Um, we'll send in a false alarm. Tell them there's a great big fire. Down at, uh, 625 9th Avenue. Well, I don't wanna get caught. You're gonna get caught. Now, go on. You need to send somebody else. Oh. Well, you don't have to hit me, Dick. It looks like I'm taking all the chances. Go. Yeah. Fellas, we gotta think of something different. We've been sending in fire alarms and burglars and drunks all night. Yeah, we've sent in a drunk from down near every street in town. Well, uh, let's see. Then... Operator, there's a fire at 625 9th Avenue. Flames pouring out the window. Calling cars, hey. 1417. Proceed to 625 9th Avenue. Fire report is there. Calling cars 81417. Hello? Fire Chief Cronin talking. Yeah, another false alarm. Why don't you put down your checkerboards and do something about it? What do you mean, do something? We've got the homicide squad, the traffic department, and the sheriff's office tracing the calls. <laughs> Yeah, he's pretty hot. They ought to turn the hose on him. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who could have did that. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Nothing. Just a little bit of nervous, that's all. <laughs> oh. You're doing all right, Spike. Let's see, we got to think of another thing. Here, you got another slug? Sure thing. Um, what's the, what's the number of that place around the corner? Uh, 124. 120, here. Tell them there's a dead body in 124 Merrill Street. Go on. No, wait a minute, Jeff. I think get one for me running every two minutes. Oh, now go on, go on. I'll protect you. If anybody squawks, I'll tell them you haven't been out of here all night. Go on. <laughs> they get a kick. They find out it's an undertaking parlor. <laughs> <laughs> undertaking parlor. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, boy. Hello? Hello? Are you right? Is this the police department? Brooks, Bacon. Send over the wagon. I got some customers for you. Hey, hand me the phone book. We get something good. Outgrown phone spaces, have you? Looking for real trouble, eh? Come on, you've had enough fun for one night. Where are you taking us? What do you suppose? What are we doing? You should ask that with the telephone book in your hand. Get gone before you have the boys dragging the river for an automobile. Say, when my old man hears about this, you're gonna be minus a badge. You've said enough for one night. All right. Come on. Come on. 
Why don't you put handcuffs on it? You don't need handcuffs. All you need is something to button up that big mouth of yours. Step right. along, gentlemen. The carriage is waiting. Hey, it's daylight. How long are they going to keep us here? Quit just squawking. We're going to serve breakfast pretty soon. They always do. Can we order anything we want? Ham and eggs, hotcakes? Yeah, you can order, but you get coffee and mush just the same. Come on, kids. Line up here. Be careful what you say. What's the matter? You scared? No, but when you get to talking, you talk a little over time. Come on, you kids. Come on. Now, you Sprite. Yes? What are you doing down here? You've never been here before, have you? No, sir. Well, what are you doing here now? Why, well, you're a good boy. You have a shoe shining stand. You work hard. What do you want to start running around with these hoodlums for? Now, be a good little boy. Go on home. And keep away from these bad boys. Come on. Yes, yes, ma'am. Well, come on. Beat it, beat it. Oh, come on, get out of here. Ain't you gonna third degree us? Shove off, I wanna get some sleep. Well, how do you like that? Uh, my old man's gonna get somebody's job for this, you know that. Mm, mine, I suppose. Well, maybe. You know, he's a pretty big shot, he's got a lot to say. Yeah? Yeah. I suppose you're gonna be a big shot someday, too, huh? Oh, you bet your life, boy, just like him. Now, listen you. I've been pretty lenient with all you boys. But the next time they bring you in here, I'm going to put you in a cell. You want to do it now? Keep your trap shut. Well, I guess you old man put in a fix already. Come on, let's go. Nice to have been with you. Just a minute, boy. Come and look at the spot. A tough lot, that. No, that not. Poor little devil's born without a chance. They're all trying to be hard and tough because they figure that's the best way to get along in this world. The tough guy puts it over on the guy that ain't so tough. And makes small work for the police department. What else can you expect? Say, I was born in this district myself. I liked the uniform, so I became a cop. But I could just as easy have gone the other way and been a crook. I guess that's right. Sneaking to. Sneaking? What kind of talk is that? Where's my briefcase? What do you want it for? I have a business appointment. Brennan, you've never had anything but business appointments all your life. No business. Never a cent if you've got to this house in ten years. What? I don't care for myself. It's Chuck I'm thinking of. Sometimes, Brennan, I think I'm a fool because I haven't told him the truth about you. Well, what's that? that you're no good, that you've never mounted anything and never will. But I haven't. And so he thinks you're great, a man of great affairs. He's trying to grow up to be like you. He won't let anybody say a word again you because you're his model and wants to be like his old man. Don't you shush me. I know what I'm doing. Heaven help him. It's happening. He is grown up to be like you. Another no good. Perhaps I should have told the lad before it's too late. Now do I get my mm. briefcase or don't I? Well then get me a cup of coffee. Mm. 
A man has got to have something to occupy his mind. Sitting around here wasting a, a half a day. That should worry you. You've wasted 365 whole days every year ever since I knew you. Well, Mary, I, uh, I didn't want to worry you. But I had a feeling that maybe I ought to be going and seeing what's happened to Chuck. Since when did you start worrying over Chuck? He's his father's son, can do no wrong, can he? Well, I'll admit he's a fine, high-spirited lad, but a bit reckless. I was going to find Rook and ask him to keep an eye on him. Rook never has his eye off him. Where have you been all night? In the camp. Well, ain't that nice. Have you been thieving? No, I ain't been thieving. Then what did they put you into the can for? Oh, it was Halloween and we pulled a couple of gangs and the cops got sore. You know that guy Rourke's getting too smart. What did they do to you? Nothing. They didn't even give us a bed. Well, that's too bad. So wash your face. Mm -hmm. What did I tell you? He's got to be the spitting image of you. Well, I was never in the can. That's a pity. <laughs> Don't dry your hands on the dish towel. What you got to eat? Oh, I kept these warm for you. Don't know why. Don't eat so fast. Why are you picking on me? Well, for a lot of reasons. One thing, I got your mother all upset, spending the night in the can like a common hoodlum. Uh, hey, how long is it since you quit school? Two years. You ought to be looking for a job. A job? I think it'd be a good idea. Well, Pop only saps work. You told me that's yourself. Well, yes, but... Uh, well, all right. Am I like you or am I not? I got my own gang. Make them stand around just like you make everybody stand around in the district. Yeah. Do you work? Does Oldham work? No. You use your planes. Sure. You get someplace. Look where you are now. Maybe you'll be Oldham's boss. Get to be supervisor. Maybe you get to be mayor. Who knows? Well, now, there's a lot of truth in what you're saying. <laughs> but if it was a fair fight, then I, I have nothing more to say. What fight? Here's some fresh cakes for but you. But you don't know why you did it. And I suppose... No, I don't want any more coffee. Now, Mary, do I get my briefcase? I ain't seen it.
I heard you. It was lovely. Thank you. Where's your mother? Where's my patient? Not this beautiful person. You're worse than Nora. There's more sugar in your speech than there is in the medicine you gave me. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel? I feel fine, doctor. Honestly. It's sheer time foolery for me to be going away. No, no, I think it's for the best. We'll have no more arguments. Oh, Nora, is this fresh water? Uncle could have left me that I'd much rather have than this. Well, don't laugh at it. It brings in 500 a month. Take more than that to fix it up. Fix it up. You don't think I'm going to leave it this way, do you? Julie, why don't you let us handle this? We'll take care of it. You've been taking care of it. Where are you going? I'm going to inspect my property. Please send the car back. May I come in and look at your apartment? I'm the new owner. You're not going to raise the rent, are you? Of course not. There you are, dear. You run and get your mother ready. The ambulance will be here any second. Will you excuse her, please? Her mother's very ill and we're sending her away. I'd like to talk to you. Will you wait, please? Why, well, yes. Thank you. Little darling, they're taking her mother away. Who's mother? Nora's. The doctor told me they might take her away today. Hey, do I look sick? Did I understand you to say that you own this property? Yes. I've always wanted to meet the kind of person who owned a tenement like this who lived on the poverty and misery of the people of the slums. I beg your pardon? Miss Fifth Avenue. Or is it Miss Riverside Drive? Bleeding to death the poor devils who live here. How dare you? How dare I? I have to look after these people. To try and save their wretched, miserable lives. This lady here, I'm sending her away so she may have a chance to live. I don't always get them in time. Last week there was one downstairs. It was too late. Why? Well, they paid $12 a month, you know. The price of two orchids. But this filthy hole has given her tuberculosis. Just the same as every apartment you own that provides you income is breeding disease in the family of every poor devil who has to live here. I hope you enjoy the $12 a month. Bring that in here, please. Come on, come on, come on. Hey, come on, come on. Hey, 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 h
Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. That chin up, baby. Be a good soldier. That's it. I'll be back and see you in a little while. Hey, hey, come on now. Remember what the doctor said. You gotta keep your chin up. Go on the house. Go on. Should I? Chuck is winning, ain't he? I guess I did. Maybe you'd better go over and let the doctor look at it. Come on, I'll take you. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Listen, Chuck. If I catch you fighting again, I'm going to run you in. Oh, well, what do you got there? Ah, uh, nothing. You'd better go over and see the doc. Oh, I don't need to see no doctor. Mind what I'm telling you. Go on over and see the doctor. Ah, uh, nothing. One of those is the doctor in? He's in the surgery. You wait right in here, please. Put you there. I have a wish. I must let go. Hi, Doc. Hello, Chuck. Well, this is a surprise. You? I didn't know. So Miss Park Avenue landed in the slums. Right on her face. Just a moment. Sit down, please. This is an emergency hospital, and I insist you remain for treatment. What's the matter with you, Chuck? Oh, somebody clonked me over the head with a bottle. I think I cracked my mitt here, too. Oh, that mitt's all right. Uh, they couldn't dent that dome with an axe. <laughs> <laughs> Take Chuck in the dressing room and clean that up. That's one of our chief products here in this district, black eyes. We turn them out wholesale. So you came down to see how the other half lived. Are you starting again? Haven't you said everything you possibly could? I only inherited that property this morning. It was wished on me. I don't like it any better than you do, and I intend to spend all the money it brings in fixing it up, providing I get some help instead of abuse. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't understand. Why didn't you tell me? You didn't give me a chance. No, no. I can't fix that eye with those tears coming out. Now you cheer up. I'm going to do everything I can to help you. Say all. Put those instruments down. There we are. This will take care of it. Let go of my hand. Does it hurt? No, it tickles. Scoot. Well, I'll be seeing you. I'm afraid so. Okay, Doc. Send the bill to my lawyer. All right, Chuck. <laughs> That's a fib. <laughs> <laughs> 
Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Nora. I'll be over and see you later. She's sweet. But those boys, are they all like that? Most of them. What happens to them? Oh, some of them come through, but the majority of them crack up. Take more than paint and varnish to help them. Well, if we saved one in a thousand, it would be worthwhile, wouldn't it? Yes, I guess it would. I'll make a deal with you. I'll continue to patch up their bodies, and you see what you can do for them mentally. Partners? Partners. Goodbye. Goodbye. You're the most stupid man I ever saw. All right, all right. But now, Mary, do I get my briefcase? Go ask Tim Farley where it is. He brought you home last night. Oh, so that's it. I have even seen that low, down, backbiting, double-crossing piece of armor, let alone speak to him. Then you wasn't out with him last night. Never fear. I was with Cy Oldham, the boss of the district, discussing a big deal that will end our worries for the rest of our days, if I put it over. Suppose you found somebody to finance the Brown Tunnel under the Atlantic. Now, Mary, I've been trying to tell you about it all morning. Now, this is something more in my line as an organizer. I'm following a union of the soda trucks that will give me an income of a thousand dollars a week. You expect me to look forward to that? Now, come in. Well, how are you all this bright and shiny morning? I just come by to return your briefcase to you. There's your briefcase, Brennan. What to tell you? Sure, I took the liberty of keeping it because it contains the papers for the organization of the big new soda class union. Yes, I was just asking about it. So pull up a chair and have a bite to eat. Uh, no, thanks, Foghorn. I've had my breakfast, but I I would have a small cup of coffee. Well, better heat up the coffee for him. It's hot now. Well, then uh, bring him a cup so that he can drink it. <coughs> Are you sure you're not hungry? No, I tell the truth, I'm not hungry. But I'll nibble on these while I'm waiting for me coffee. Green Spike. Where were you when the fight started? I was busy. Oh. Why didn't you get in it? I just don't like to fight. Well, how are you going to get anywhere if you don't learn to fight? I just sooner not get nowhere if I have to fight. Hmm. Well, look at Langford and uh, Johnson. Look at Lewis. Most of them was born big. I was born little. Well, you better get in there next time. You're not going to be in the club. How is your head this morning? It's terrible. Oh, now, really, really, I, I've had the sufficiency. Uh, uh, but, uh, well, of course, I don't want to offend you. <laughs> Tell Mary about our plans for organizing the Saudi trucks. Our plans? Oh, Foggy, you're the modest one. I only wish they were my plans. Mary, there's a fortune in it. I was figuring out yesterday that the average week will let us $1,000. That is a reasonable approximation. What do you give the men for their money? The, the right, right to, to bargain. bargain. The right to bargain what? <laughs> Nora! Well, Nora, my darling. Now, ain't it fine that your mommy's going to have fresh eggs and milk and fresh air every day, huh? Well, that's right. They took her to the sanitarium today, didn't they? Well, I never had no faith in sanitarium. Oh, you better be using your mouth, eating other people's vittles. Aha! Uh -huh, been fighting in the streets again, huh? Is your head all right, Chuck? Yes. What happened to your head? Oh, Tony cracked me with a bottle when I wasn't looking. Don't ever let me hear of you fighting with bottles. I don't need to fight with bottles. I can lick that mob with one hand. Well, all right. But don't forget what I've always taught you. And don't forget your father was a three-time champion. Yeah, I know. Hey, Ma, what happened to my breakfast? Ask your father's bosom companion here. If he'd get up, I'd like to make a place for Nora. Oh, oh no, I have some things in the apartment I can fix. You know, here, the letter says here. Say, why don't you live here all the time? Ah, why not? Oh, oh no, I couldn't do that. Why, you couldn't afford it. Who couldn't? I'm on the verge of a deal that'll make us all practically millionaires. So don't you be worrying about where the money is coming from. <laughs> I wouldn't stay awake waiting for it, but we'll be get along some way, darling. You better take the chance while you have it, otherwise we'll be shoving you into an orphan asylum. And believe me, they make you toe them out there. 
You'll be up at six o'clock every morning, working hard all day, and the food they give you is not fit to throw out the window. And I can stop. Oh, no. Can't you keep your mouth shut? Didn't you have a hard enough time as it is now? No, you got to open that big big mouth of yours. I don't know what you have this stooge hanging around here for anyway. If that boy were mine, he wouldn't be permitted to talk to his elders in that fashion. But he ain't sure. Now, don't forget that. <laughs> Mary, could I have another cup of coffee, please? <laughs> hey, come on, cut that out. Come on. But, but he said they'd take me away. Well, they ain't gonna take you no place. Don't pay any attention to that flannel mouth Farley. I don't want to leave here. Well, you're not going to leave here. Now, stop your blubbering, will you? Can't think. Say, they can't take you away if you're working. But, but I do work. I help everybody around here. No, no, I mean you got to have a steady job. You're going to sing. That's it. You're going to sing for Pete. But, but they won't allow me. I'm not of age. Right, now, listen, don't think so much. You let me do the talking and you sing. But don't sing those old-fashioned songs. Got to sing something new now. Torch songs, that's it, you know. Torch songs? Hey, you got a dime? Mm-hmm. Come on, I'll buy you a song. What's the matter? I'm scared. What you gotta be scared about? You got nothing to lose, come on. Hi. Hi. Wanna make yourself some money? Why, uh... Got a deal for you, right here. Great little singer. Oh, she's too... What do you mean? Look at her. She's 18 years old. Got her working papers and everything. You want to hear it? Go get your piano player. Go on. Haven't got any time to waste, you know. Got a lot of other deals here. Right. Play the girl's music, will you? Do your stuff. Have a cigar? Thanks. a week. Ten dollars a week for our services? What have you got to do with it? I'm a manager, ten percent. Ten dollars or nothing. Make it fifteen. Well, we'll take ten. Give her that other song there and let her learn it and come back here at seven o'clock and I'll have a dress for you. Gee, thanks. You're not making any mistake. Say, if you're going to be a businessman, don't pass out any more ropes like that. <laughs> Let me be. Oh, will you never set me free? The ties that bound us are still around us. There's no escape that I can see. And still these little things remain. Thank 
sleeping piano in the next apartment. Those tumbling words that told you that my heart and a fairground painted wings. These foolish things remind me of you. you up in this get-up. What's the matter, Roy? I don't know what's the matter. This girl said she was 18. You're lying, Pete. If you ever try to pull this again, I'll shut up this joint so tight you won't be able to get in or out. I assure you, ladies, that she has very fine parents. They, they take excellent care of her. Well, I'd like to see her parents. Why, certainly, ladies. Come right along. How about the dress? <laughs> I'll see that you get it back. Hey, Mom, I'm in a jam. Now what are you done? I got no job done at Pete's Grotto. And two police names came in to pick her up. You gotta help me. I'll do nothing of the sort. This is what you're going to get out of your own jam. But, Mom, it's not for me. It's on account of Nora. We got it all set with work to say that you're her mother. Me lie? Now, Nora, don't you be frightened. Just leave it all work. Mr. Brennan, you'll have to talk to this daughter of yours. I picked her up singing in a cafe, pretending she was 18 years old. Nora! Why, sis! Did you send that girl out to work? I did not, and I don't thank you for accusing me. Hey, I'm the man of the house here. You'll do your talking to me. I'll send an investigator down here first thing in the morning to talk to you. And I'll do all in my power to assist you, ma'am. Oh, hello, Nora, darling. And what do you hear from your mother? She just heard plenty. You should have heard what Ma was telling sister. Good night, ladies. Good night. <coughs> what are you trying to do? Spoil everything? Which one is she I got? Those were policewomen. Just trying to convince them that Ma's Nora's mother. Well, my fine feathered friend, you got us in a fine mess, didn't you? Yeah, well, I took your tip and got you out of it, too. We're not out of it yet. If those two old busybodies had run into any other officer but me, this poor girl would be down in the juvenile home right now. That's a good place for her. Three meals a day and a good education. Stop your gab, Polly. Well, I'll drop around in the morning and see what I can do. Good night to you all. Good night, all. Good night. <laughs> you poor little thing. And whatever have I been putting on you? I suppose this is your idea, too. You're good for nothing. Who put that into your head? I suppose you think that's using your brain. No. Throw me off, will you? If that boy were mine, I'd break every bone in his body. You want this tape into your head that he is yours? Well, I want no part of it. Well, he's mine. You leave Take me alone. Take it and play your game of creeping in. All right. Cut for deal. I have some bad news for you, too. Fella told me a while back that uh, they were going to replace all the soda clerks with machines to mix all the drinks. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's bad. Well, we'll organize the men that make the machines. Hockey, is that brain of yours? 
<laughs> Nothing can stop you. <laughs> you from the dock. He's been telling me what you're going to do in the tenements. They sure need it. How's Nora? I haven't seen her yet. Anything wrong? Two women were here from the Children's Aid Society. They're going to take her away. Can they do that? I'm afraid so. This is something I can do. You know, the one in a thousand. I'll go with you. This is Miss Stone, your new landlady. Yes, I know. How do you do? Mrs. Brennan, we want to see Nora. Now, you're not going to take that child away. I'll get the papers and I'm going to be her guardian myself. I thought of something better than that. I'd like to send her to private school. Would you? Oh, Nora, come out. It's all right. And wait till you hear this, darling. <laughs> Have they been trying to frighten you? Look, Nora, when I was a little girl, I went to a very nice school. I'd like to send you there. You'd have a lovely room all to yourself. Or if you like company, you can live with another girl. And you can have singing lessons and dancing lessons or anything you'd like to learn. Would you like to go there? Oh, Miss Stone, I'd, I'd love it, but, but I couldn't let you do it. What's the matter with this place? She don't need singing lessons. She needs singing lessons, I'll get her a teacher. Quiet, you. I think that's for Nora to decide. I'm sure you'd be happy there, dear. And then when your mother's well, you two can be together again. Nora, aren't you the lucky one? <laughs> I think heaven must have sent Miss Stone down here to us. Ah, oh, bless her. <laughs> Would you like to go now? Oh, yes. Well, well get your things. My car's outside. <laughs> now you're going away. <laughs> <laughs> Come here to me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't suppose you'll talk to us when you get back. <laughs> well, that's that. I've sent in my report to the department. It'll be okay with the juvenile authorities and everybody will be satisfied. And what should it be satisfied about, huh? You sure messed things up good, didn't you, Copper? That'll be enough out of you. Yeah, ain't you the hero, huh? Take a girl away from the place where she's born and raised and knows everybody and turn her over to a woman who sends her to some school where she don't know anybody at all. Chuck, don't be disrespectful. Well, how are you going to have any respect for a woman who's so dumb she buys people a lot of lambs and rugs and bathtubs that they don't even want? They'll huff the lambs and put garbage in the bathtub. I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, you keep something in mind. I thought you were dumb, but she's dumber. Nice, quiet little lad. Don't worry about it, Mrs. Brennan. She's only suffering from grown pains. Park Avenue, I think you're swell. Thanks. 
been smoking? Nobody. Come on, who's been smoking? I only took a puff. Well, cut it out. Can't keep them conditioned in smoke, you know that. I know it's eating you. They took Nora away. They never took Nora no place. Heck, they didn't. She got Nora can last night and this morning they sent her away. I tell you, they didn't send her any place. She went to a swell dump. Same school as lady one owns the apartment. I fixed that. Oh. Say, so you know that lady's okay, ain't she? She's gonna give my mom a new rug. Maybe we can cop it. Not a chance. The old man's already figuring on hawking it. I got a great idea. Maybe we could get into fixing up this joint. Sure, then we can hop the stuff and tell her somebody broke it and stole it. Yeah. Sure. Hey, grow up, will you? Grow up. Don't be small timers, huh? Well, she pays cash for everything, don't she? You mean she carries a bankroll? No, what do you think? We could cop it, huh? Hmm. What do we do? Do we draw straws? Pick me. Please don't pick me. My old man's a thief. And a four time loser. He's in the big house. I'm scared. Oh, you're yellow. Your old man's a crook, and you're a crook, too. It was born in you, you can't get away from it. Oh, I'll let him alone, fellas. Go on, Spike. You better go. You're too little. Must I go? You heard what I said, Spike. Now go on, beat it. I'll give you rough down. Yeah, yeah, okay, Spike, but go on, we're busy now. Blow. Bolt the door after him. Well, I guess you're right. We better draw straws. Get the broom, huh? How do we get you rats out? With cheese? Say, Luigi wrote that. He's the only one that can spell that good. They're asking for it. Go see where they are. Hey, Daddy, I'll cross the street. Mm. Tell him I'm over here with six guys. He can bring ten. Okay, Chuck. Give me that. Okay. Well, boys, you know what to do. If they accept the challenge, wipe the place up with them. Chuck's waiting for you. There's seven of us. But you can bring ten. You'll need them. Yeah, we'll bring seven. Okay. Well, I told the guys and they said they'd only bring seven. Ah, oh, making it easy on us, eh? Uh, get set, fellas. Think we had enough nerve to walk in, did you? 
You walked in, but you're going to be carried out. That's so? Yeah. I ain't going to give you a chance to part my hair with a bottle this time. Who did? You did, you fink. You're nothing but a two-bit guy. You're the kind of a guy that stools to the coppers. And if you can't find a copper, you'd stool to another guy. Yeah? Well, I don't try to make money off a girl that sings. Oh, you're the guy that stools to them women reformers, huh? <laughs> General Chuck. Three o'clock. All you guys be there, too. Wish I hadn't said Spike was yellow. Why do you talk too much? Remember all the rub downs he gave us on this table? Oh, shut up, will you? Hey, hey, we forgot the flowers. We gotta get some flowers. Where will we get them? Well, where do we always get them? Go on, go get some flowers. Hurry up. Is Nora going to sing? I don't know. I told the doctor to get her. Do you think she'll come? How do I know? Maria. For the little colored boy. Spike? Si, poor little bambino. Espera. Put them on the sidewalk. Why? So the boy can steal them. Oh. You see, Maria, now they are happy.
that chair down. It's just been painted. What a change it's made in you, having everything nice and clean. You never will amount to anything. If it hadn't been for you, the colored boy would be alive today. If it wasn't for your fighting, you wouldn't have been in the way of the truck. You're the one that's responsible for his death. He was one of your boys, wasn't he? The boys that you're teaching to lie and to steal and to fight. This fight was a good boy. Laid down his life for a friend, the finest thing a man could do. You wouldn't understand. If you keep on, you'll be taking lives. And if you don't go to work, you'll end up in the big house. All right, I'll go to work. I'll go down and see if Holden needs another leader. see Mr. Odom. I've waited long enough for you. Odom can't be bothered seeing you, Brennan. Now, I've told you that every day. But this is very important. Now, listen. Why don't you get wise to yourself and get a job and quit hanging around here? Please. Now, you get out of here before I throw you out. Where's that estimate? Here you are, Good yeah. morning, Mr. Odom. Uh, go get me a couple of cigars. Uh, yes, sir. The same kind I got yesterday, boy? Yes. Yes, sir. I, I won't be a minute, Mr. Odom. I... What do you do to join up? Want to join the Navy and see the world? No. I just want to get out of town. What's your name? Chuck Brennan. How old are you? Sixteen. Almost seventeen. You're almost too young to join the Navy. When's your birthday? Tenth of November. Well, I'm afraid you'll have to come back then. What do you mean? We can't take enlistments under seventeen. How do you like that? Tell a guy the truth and he turns you down. I could have just as well said I was 17 and you wouldn't have known the difference. Oh, I think we could have found out. If you really want to be a Navy man, though, come back on your birthday and bring your parents' consent. I'm sorry. No, forget it. Band. Oh, I've been around. Come on, let's go shoot some pool. Okay. Set him up, huh, Pop? This is joint? Yeah. You know who that is? That's Blackie Davis. I seen his picture in the paper. You know, the big gambler. Yeah, this is terrible. He needs some more paint in the joint. Some more bright lights. We'll stick some slot machines over there. Put a nice little cocktail bar right over there. That's swell. Let's give the joint a little class. Yeah, that ought to do it. Where a little pool, James? This is Blackie Davis. Oh, yeah, I'm taking over this part of the town. You got a partner, fella. Partner? I don't need a partner. You heard what he said, you got a partner. I've run this place successfully for 20 years. 
and I'm not interested. And you're still gonna run if you're a nice boy. Be smart, McCarthy. Make yourself some dough. What's your name, kid? Chuck Bennett. Right, boy, you keep your ears wide open, don't you? I just heard you say you're taking over this part of town. That's right. You know, you want to talk to me. If there's anything worth knowing around here, I know it. That's swell. Well, you say you and I take a little walk and you show me around. Sure thing. Okay, Polly. Chuck. Hello, Rusty. Hello, Blackie. Hiya. Fine. Chuck, I want you to meet Mrs. Davis. How do you do? Hello. Chuck, will you go inside and wait for me there, will you? Sure. That a boy. Where'd you pick that up? I'm taking over the lower downtown. That kid's gonna come in handy. <laughs> yeah, he looks it. You're taking him right out of the cradle, aren't you? Listen, that kid's the boss of a bunch of tough little monkeys downtown. He's gonna be very, very valuable. If you find anything you can use, you use it, don't you? That's me, baby. Even if you destroy it. What's the matter with you? Have you been reading too much? Oh, Blackie, no. So you want to make yourself a little money? Sure. Well, let me let you in. What do I do? What do you think we were doing over at McCarthy's? Well, I figured you were financing to make them a little dough. That's right. That's what we are, financiers. You know, some people are dumb. We supply the brains. Got the laundry business, cleaning and dyeing business, and other little businesses. You see, some people, they make too much dough, and they forget to pay off. That's where we come in. We go out to collect. Oh, collect? That's right. Sure. I'll tell you more about it later. Here, go out and get yourself some clothes. Gee, thanks. Thanks a lot. That's all right. Wait a minute. How about the loose slip? Buttoned up. Had it, baby. Aren't they beautiful? My mother had china like that. What's the matter, Brennan? Worrying about your millions? What's the matter? You got no fever. Your head's as cool as ice. Been drinking more than usual today, Brennan? No. Chuck went down to the office this morning. Was he supposed to? He said he was going to. He wanted to see if Oldham wanted any more leaders. If that's that loafer Farley, I won't let him come in here and muss things up. Oh, Hello, Mrs. Well, Brennan. How, how are you? Are you? <laughs> oh, nice place, look. Oh, come on. Hello, Nora. Nice. How are you? Oh, Nora. <laughs> well, glory be. Come here, darling. She looks like a bit of heaven. <laughs> how pretty you look. For you. From me? Why, I ain't had nothing happen to me like this for years. You know, well, sit down here, Mr. Thank you. Hey, back. Try out that chair. It has every comfort in the world except the rockers. <laughs> oh, here, Nora. <laughs> now, you sit down here. I know who you're looking for. But don't worry, he'll be here any minute now. <laughs> Well, we have ham and cabbage, and plenty of it, haven't we, Mary? Oh, sure. Now you're all going to stay for dinner. Fine. <laughs> well, hi there. Hello, Nora. Hello, Hello. hi, Doc. Hello, Chuck. Hello, Ma. Hi, Pop. Hello, son. Where'd you get the new suit? Oh, you like it, huh? Oh, I'm in a swell setup. I'm in the dough, too. Well, where did you get it? Blackie Davis bought it for me. Say that again. Blackie Davis. Who's that? He's one of the dirtiest crooks in New York. What do you mean, crook? He's, I'm in business with him. You're what? 
Sure, he's a financier. He finances dumbbells and shows him how to make a lot of dough. Take off them clothes. Do as I say, I'll get out of here and never let me see your face again. Pop, don't talk to me like that in front of people. I'm through talking. Take them off or I'll kill them off. Now, wait, no, Brennan, no, you're going about no. this in the wrong way. Why should I? After what I saw today? What do you want me to do? Grow up to be a stooge like you? Okay. I can take it. Don't worry, Mom. I'll send you lots of dough. What about that acne crowd? They won't pay you off. I had to kick the manager's door in three times today. You should have to take care of them myself. You do look different. You like it, huh? You look like Blackie's? Yes. Yes, I'm afraid it does. Sit down. Have, have you a mother and a father? Well, sure. Well, go home. Don't hang around Blackie. Well, well what's the matter? Well, well, Chuck, I want to tell you... That you, Chuck? Just a minute. Yeah. How do you like it, huh? Boy, that's the Dobbs. Now you belong. Oh, here. What's that for? That's the change. Oh, you keep that, Chuck. You're one of my boys now. Oh, thanks. Chuck. What do you know about the warehouse of the Acme Dry Cleaning Company? Down in the old neighborhood? That's right. Well, we kids used to bust in there on hot nights and go swimming in the tank. You mean, go in and out any time you like? Sure, through the skylight in the roof. Boys, do I pick them or do I pick them? What do you want to know for? Well, you know, Chuck, uh, we have a little dough to collect. A little surprise party, you know. Oh, am I in on it, huh? My pal, aren't you? Sure. Okay. Tonight. Shoot, it's wrong! Did you ever see him with a rod, Foggy? Never. But he ain't picking his shot works. Mm, it's a puzzle. You his father? Then get in there and make him talk. If he's innocent, every minute is letting the guilty man get away. He, he won't talk to me. He has no use for me. Why? When he found out I was a kind of a stooge, without any regular employment, he lost all respect for me. Come on. 
Come clean. You better talk, kid. You want to protect a guy that shoots a policeman in the back and then plugs you? You'll never get anywhere acting this way, kid. How's the kid? They've got him on the grill now. What for? I told them he was trying to protect me. He ran to me when I was down and they got him. The rats. What more do they want? The kid won't talk. And we're trying to find out who did the shooting, Rock. All right, my boy. If Rock dies, you'll go to the chair. You know that, don't you? How's Rock? Pretty bad. Is he dying? I'm afraid so. Take me to him, will you? I want to see him. Will you talk? Take me to him, will you please? All right, boys, take him in. Now get a hold of that lower sheet. Yeah, come on, give us a lift here now. All right, lift. There you are. Hello, Rod. Hello, Chuck. Who got me? Blackie Davis. He had a 38 automatic. Where does he hang out? Grand Apartments. Blackie Davis. Grand Apartments. Pick him up. Come on, boys. They're yellow, Roy. They don't fight fair. They use guns. Chuck, they used you for a stooge. Yeah. I call my own man a stooge. He never did anything wrong in his life. Maybe he never worked, but he was always on the square. Why did you run to me? I saw you were down. They kept shooting at you. That isn't what we fought, is it? We always gave him a chance. Yes, Chuck. We always did. Pretty slick, isn't it? How long do you think you'll be gone? Oh, I don't know. Four years, maybe. Gee, Chuck, I'm, I'm going to miss you a lot. I miss you too, Nora. Texas on float five. Well, I guess that's me. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. Well, well i got to be gone. Yeah, I guess you do. You, you won't forget me, will you, Chuck? N no, no. Texas on float five. Oh, I guess that's me. Oh. Goodbye, Jack. 